astrophotography cameras have come so far in the last decade or so, with ZWO and QHY dominating the market in today's world. And ZWO has done really some amazing things with full automation with their platform with ASIR Pro being compatible with all of their cameras and a variety of different telescopes and mounts. It just makes astrophotography so much easier for a lot of us to enjoy. And today we're going to be looking at the ASI 2600 MC Pro camera. Now this is my personal camera. We're going to go over some of the features and the things I like and dislike about this camera. So let's dive right on in. The ASI 2600 MC Pro has long been regarded as one of ZWO's best cameras in their lineup, and I actually agree with them. I've owned this camera for about a year now at this point, and it's given me a lot of opportunity to push my astrophotography skills forward, and for that I am super excited to see what the future holds with this camera. Now this camera is quite big, I mean you can see in my hands here, it is quite a big camera. You can't put uh, your whole hand around this camera. So it is quite a big camera. In fact, it is a little bit larger than something like my Hyperstar on my 8 inch can take. So therefore, it does obscure about a half inch on each side some of the aperture of that uh, big light gathering ability for the 8 inch. If you go to anything larger than this, it is not compatible with the Hyperstar on the 8 inch model simply because the APS C style chip that this has, or a crop sensor size chip, is the largest that the Hyperstar 8 inch can take. Now this camera itself retails for $1799. That is a price cut from what they had last year. They were $2000 because they came out with the 2600 Duo, which has another little chip in here that allows you to auto guide with it. Now this is not that version, but the chips themselves are identical. Now this camera is about a pound and a half, so you have to take that in consideration with if you're using something like a really lightweight mount or something, this does add a pound and a half to your rig, so you need to make sure that it fits within your weight limitations. For me though, it doesn't really affect anything because either the Hyperstar or if I'm imaging off the back at f6.3, it doesn't affect the counterbalance all that much. I just have to slide the weight down the counterweight shaft just a little bit further to counterbalance it properly. Now looking on the back here of the camera, you do have your USB 3 port, you've got some USB 2 ports for extra accessories, and then you also have a 12 volt power plug on the side. That is for the cooled fan. If you're doing deep sky astrophotography with this, you'll need to put the fan on some power to cool the chip down to make sure that the noise levels stay down. As typical with DSLRs and every other camera, the longer you expose these, the chips slowly heat up, and when they heat up, they get more noisy. So you wanna have your cooler on this to keep that noise pattern down. Now this camera does feature, like I said, a full APS-C style. It's uh, 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, and uh, it is really, really nice at 26 megapixels. That delivers super high resolution shots when you're doing deep sky astrophotography on wide field nebula and stuff. Now this camera with that high resolution though will allow you to take really nice high dynamic range shots of all your targets. And that's really great and fantastic. But the thing is, is that it also allows you to crop down the photo. So if you wanted, you know, the field of view to be a little bit smaller than what the native camera captured for you, you can crop it down, let's say, 30% and you'll still have really nice clear photos from edge to edge, which is really nice. However, if you're looking for a camera to get really close to smaller targets, like let's say for example, you want to shoot the ring nebula, unless you have a telescope that's really high focal length that you're putting this on the back of, the ring nebula is going to be really tiny in one of these. Something like even my 8 inch with this camera, with my 6.3 reducer, the ring nebula is like the size of an eraser on the end of the tip of a pencil. It's tiny. You'll need a chip that's a lot smaller than this that has the same sort of pixel count but in a much smaller package so that you can get really close to those targets with higher definition. But this for wide field astrophotography is absolutely killer because this is absolutely amazing at capturing the really highs and lows of the different nebula. It also has the ability that once you stack all of your images, you're essentially noise free. This camera gives such a low 
noise pattern. And once you stack 10, 20, 30 exposures together, it is completely smooth across the frames that I have processed before to where there's little to no noise that you need to correct in post-processing, which in my opinion is amazing. No other camera that I have ever owned has had that ability. With that low noise pattern also comes zero amp glow. So when you are shooting things like dark frames, amp glow is a prevalent pattern that you have off the corner of the sensor chips. This is simply just a design of the chip. It's nothing you're doing wrong. But a lot of the cameras like I've had, I have the 183 that has amp glow, my 294 MC Pro had amp glow, and this one does not at all. And that is because you're paying more money for a better chip, for better resolution, for better higher dynamic range. It's just the same thing as when you're shopping for your own DSLR. You've got different models along the way that some are cheaper, some are more expensive, but in the end, usually the more expensive model will wind up taking the better photos at the end of the day. That goes kind of the same way for these Astro cameras. This camera has been with me through the Hyperstar C8 and also different telescopes. And every single telescope I've used this with, you can easily focus the APS-C size inside the telescope. This camera excels at the wide field astrophotography spectrum as it allows you to capture several degrees wide and tall and get really wide nebula such as the elephant trunk, the Orion nebula, the horse head, things of that nature that require a several of a degree field of view. Now you can put one of these on any telescope, of course. It comes with all the adapters and the things that you need to hook it up, whether you're shooting at f6.3 or at f2, or you're using something like a Rokinon camera lens. You just got to get, you know, the right adapter that transfers into your type of lens for one of these. But these cameras are highly versatile. You can put these on any telescope combination and achieve some really nice astrophotos. Really, the only two issues that I have with this camera, and they aren't really that big of a deal for most people, is just that how big this camera is. It's really chunky. It's kind of heavy. And that's the only thing that we talk about with astrophotography, because you always find ways to keep the weight down, or you want to try to keep the weight down, because sometimes when you're using certain mounts, you have to stay within a certain payload capacity. So that's something that you'll want to research for your mount, is whether or not with your telescope tube, your accessories, your guide camera or guide scope, and then an extra pound and a half of a camera, are you exceeding the weight capacity or the recommended weight capacities for astrophotography or not? With mine, it's just simply moving the tube forward or backward just a little bit, which is no big deal. But with how big this camera is, I don't like that it does obscure my Hypersar just a little bit of aperture because aperture rules when you're doing astrophotography. The more light you can gather, the better the images are going to come out in the long run. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time, and clear skies to you.